discover previously unreleased lectures by Neville Goddard that unveil the power of faith and action. Are you ready to transform your life by acting on your deepest beliefs? This video will guide you toward the greatness within you. Don't miss this journey to uncovering your true power. Join us as we delve into some of Neville Goddard's radio lectures from the 1950s, which until now have not been recorded or shared online. Today's discussion emphasizes recognizing one's own greatness. Sit back and enjoy the insights of one of the visionaries. Neville Goddard argued that what truly matters is not so much what you think, but what you deeply feel. You can spend a great deal of time contemplating an action without taking it, but when you're deeply moved, you're compelled to act, and it is then that God, the source of all life, acts through feeling. You might entertain a thousand possibilities without committing to any action. A sincere and deep feeling carries more weight than any thought. Asking with faith, without hesitation, is key, for he who doubts is like the wave driven and tossed by the wind. Such a person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Instead, we must be doers of the word, and not just listeners, deceiving ourselves. If you only listen and do not act, you are like someone who looks at their face in a mirror and then walks away, forgetting what they look like. But if you act on the word and are not a forgetful listener, you will look into that perfect law of liberty and persevere. That person will be blessed in all they do. How to become a doer and not just a listener? By acting with faith. The central figure of the Bible, Jesus, never limited God's love or the power of faith. All his great works were announced with the words, according to your faith. Faith includes feeling. If you have faith, you will act, and if you act, it is God in you who acts, for God is your own wonderful human imagination, whose eternal name is I Am. He only acts when you feel. This applies even to the most practical aspects of life. If I share my aspiration with you and you tell me to proceed on my way as if I had already achieved it, and for a moment I see the world from that perspective as if it were real, but then I deviate and forget that vision, I am a forgetful listener. However, if I persist in my action and not just listen, I remain in the state where everything is possible through the power of the word. Look in a mirror and you'll see your reflection, but there's another mirror where you can look, the mirror of your friends. If they are aware of your good news, wouldn't they reflect that your desire is already a reality? Feel its solidity and reality, and let your friends see you in that state. They are your living mirror. Now persevere in that state and do not deviate by quickly forgetting who you are. Move through this door tonight assuming you are already the person you wish to be. It doesn't matter if the exterior denies it, you've seen the expression on your friends' faces and internally heard their congratulations with faith. Now carry this feeling deep and unchangeable. Approach a living mirror of friends and acquaintances who have received your good news and accepted it as permanent. See your reflection in them. If they love you, you'll see their joy. They will celebrate your good fortune. Now persist in that consciousness and do not forget what you've seen in your living mirror. If you do, you will be blessed in your action, as indicated in the first chapter of the book of Psalms. Blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord, for in all that he does, he prospers. Didn't you free yourself from your past when you saw your friend's face reflecting what you wished them to see? If you move from a state of poverty, sickness, or weakness to a state of wealth, healing, or strength, and your friends knew it, you would have been freed from your previous limitation. Thus, by looking into the perfect law of liberty and persevering, you are blessed in all your endeavors. I tell you from my own experience, this works, but we are the operators of the power, it doesn't work on its own. You may have heard this law and read about it in a book, but have you verified through experience that the law works? Have you put it to the test? If you have, then you can speak with an authority you didn't have before. Can I tell you that by using this law you will be completely liberated? I have been in many places where I was forced to test this principle. During my stay on the small island of Barbados, with only two small ships connecting it to the hundreds of nearby islands, I committed to giving a series of lectures in Milwaukee by May 1st. When I called the travel agent, I was informed that because the ship leaving from New York only carried 60 passengers and the one from Boston only 100, there were no available passages until after September 1st. He promised to put my name on the waiting list 
but gave me no hope as the list was very long. I hung up the phone and sat in my hotel room chair, closed my eyes, and assumed I was on a ship heading to New York. I imagined eight or ten members of my family were with me, and my brother Victor was carrying my little daughter. I could feel the ship swaying, and though I hadn't booked a cabin, I stayed on deck, placed my imaginary hands on the railing, and felt the sea salt on them. Then I looked back nostalgically at the small island. I repeated the action over and over, feeling every step I took on that gangway. I felt the railing and smelled the sea salt. I did everything I would have done if I were there and when my action felt natural, I stopped. The next day, I received a call informing me that I would depart on a ship that would arrive in New York a week before my commitment in Milwaukee. When I asked the agent how he managed to get the passage, he said there had been a cancellation in New York and the only person he called on the waiting list found it inconvenient at that moment, so, knowing he could accommodate my wife, my little daughter, and me in a cabin, he let us board. I never knew why someone cancelled in New York, why the person called in Barbados couldn't take the ship at that time, or why the agent didn't call others on the waiting list. I only know that I got the passage I had imagined. I've told this story before and someone in the audience once asked, was that a Christian thing to do? You might have caused someone to cancel their trip. But I tell you, as I told her, that it was the only Christian thing to do, for I used the Christian principle to fulfill God's law. How it was going to be fulfilled was not my concern. I am told that whatever I desire, if I believe I have received it, I will have it. God never creates a desire in the human heart without having already prepared its satisfaction. This is true for every desire in this world, as well as for the greatest of all desires, which is the thirst for God. If you truly desire an experience of God, apply this principle towards it. Do what I did when I wanted to leave Barbados and come to America. I looked into the perfect law of liberty and persevered. God does not give you one law for your desire of this world and another for your pursuit of Him. It is the same law. Now is the time to turn dreams into reality. As Shakespeare said, assume a virtue if you have it not. It's crucial to embody a virtue by first feeling it within. Forgo assumptions just for tonight, and you'll find it easier to do so next week, and even easier as time goes on. Yet, if you firmly believe that your desire has already been fulfilled and maintain that conviction until you feel it in your being, it will manifest as a tangible fact in the external world. I encourage everyone to adopt this approach. Every longing comes with the promise of its fulfillment, and it's solely up to you to nurture it. You have the choice to focus on the absence of what you desire or on the gratitude for its fulfillment. God is the source of all your desires, whether they are worldly or spiritual. It's not a craving for food or water but for hearing the Word of God. When you yearn to spread the Divine Word, it's not the teaching itself you seek, but the recognition and admiration it brings. And that too has been granted to you. Every desire can be fulfilled if you focus on the law of liberty and persevere in it. You will be blessed in every endeavor you undertake. A man from New York recently visited me. I withheld my initial impression upon hearing him and waited to listen more. This individual, formerly employed in Macy's Department of Antiquities, has been teaching in one of those Eastern movements. Now, a group of followers, unable to believe in themselves, have asked him to become their leader. Learning of his desire saddened me as he sought only attention, yet I still offered my blessing. He's tired of playing a secondary role under the shadow of a leader who has amassed a fortune at the expense of those investing in illusions. Owning nothing, these followers have built a paradise for their leader, acquiring valuable properties and building on them, celebrating their generosity with expensive ceremonies, but everything remains in the leader's name. In 1943, this same man confessed that his sole purpose in coming to New York was to get rich off the New Thought movement. Hearing this, I thought he had chosen the wrong profession if he aspired to amass a great fortune. He could have opted for more lucrative businesses, such as oil or coal. While this work can provide a comfortable living, it won't lead to accumulating a fortune. Now, he has managed to amass wealth, owns properties, and a towering building in New York, financed by those willing to be exploited. The man who visited me contributed to this leader's success, and though he recognizes the falsehood, he still craves recognition. 
a new opportunity for it now presents itself to him. I pray for his success, not as a teacher, for I don't see him as one, but for the prestige he will gain from those seeking emptiness, promoting an ascetic lifestyle. Although his request doesn't violate my moral principles, I can see him achieving his goal. However, I urge those who are sincere to seek the deepest desire of all, to know God through direct experience. Look at your loved ones and affirm your faith with conviction, persevering, for God has provided the fulfillment for that search. If you don't yet feel that deep longing but sincerely seek a better life, there's nothing wrong with that. Apply the same principle of the perfect law of liberty and persist. Once you have acted, do not turn away or forget what you have done, but sleep with that conviction, and in unexpected ways, it will materialize. Today, many are absent due to Memorial Day, but I assure you there's no moment or place more sacred than another. You are on holy ground wherever you are. While millions commemorate the fallen, I speak of eternal life and awakening to divine reality. I cannot pay tribute in a cemetery to what is no longer there. The body may lie in the grave, but the spirit transcends. The story of Isaac and his sons, Esau and Jacob, recounted in Genesis, illustrates the importance of faith and conviction. By enveloping yourself in the feeling of having realized your desire, you've taken an irrevocable step toward its manifestation. Prayer is the materialization of hope, the act of giving it concrete existence. By nurturing that feeling, you are clothing your desire with reality, ensuring its fulfillment. The true blessing lies in giving your hope a tangible form. Jacob represents your desire waiting to come to life. By assuming that feeling is real, you are blessing your subjective state, ensuring its manifestation in the external world. Isaac's blindness symbolizes our inability to see our desires realized directly, but by clothing ourselves with the certainty of their fulfillment, we touch the essence of what it means to be satisfied. Feed this feeling consistently, and inexplicably, your desire will manifest in your reality.